Well, I'm, one thing I'm certain of in past experience tells me that, you know, the committee is turning over every rock to try and find dollars these days. I, I don't doubt that in the least. This is just one issue of that, or one rock, I should say, of that. And, and again, my point here is not uh, uh, challenging the, uh, uh, the motive here. It's just to say we could use a little further clarification on the dollars and cents of it in plain English. Uh, one, uh, can I just make a comment? One thing about Mr. Faramasa mentioned Henry Ford. Well, we don't have a production line materials management type operation. We have individual operations that a job <laughs> shop are done by specific groups in specific areas. And, you know, Henry Ford had a great concept. But we don't have people working, doing the same job, going down the production line, you know, 24-7. Uh, These folks have different jobs. It's a whole <laughs> different mindset whole different type of an operation. Both both work well, and our experience the, over the years, the right both work well, and, and I say this as individual departments or departments together. There are towns that only have one department in charge of public works, parks, et cetera, and grounds. Right, Joey, I'm going to have to find you out. And I've All used right. up my four minutes, so <laughs> I, I won't go any further. I yield the floor to the uh, anyone else in the public. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. With all due respect, I don't think he used the bulk of the four minutes himself. No. Um, <laughs> we're getting a lot more. I thought this was the public's opportunity to comment as opposed to be um, talked to again. Uh, my name is Ron Cook. I'm a township resident for 38 years. I live at Fort Hickory Place in Cedar Knolls. Um, I guess uh, I'm, I'm a little late to the party here. I wasn't really clear on a, a lot of what the issues have been. I haven't read the papers, but I am a concerned resident. I mean, I pay the taxes like everybody else. Uh, I guess my, my uh, comments, uh, being that I have a business background, I'm a CPA, um, I'm an ex-CFO, um, so I, I like numbers, I like to see facts, I like to see figures. Um, and I would then echo Ron's comment that I think um, some actual factual number, you know, some real number crunching where people could look at numbers would be helpful to see, you know, projected savings and so forth. That said, um, I also recognize the emotional side of an issue like this. I mean, it's, it's, it's really easy to get up and uh, say, you know, we got to leave things alone. It's so great and everything. And, and by the way, I think they are. I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm a resident of this town for 38 years is because I'm proud to say I live here. Uh, at the same time, uh, I, I don't have any complaints about the, the facilities and the job that everybody's doing. But I think to rule out of hand and reject uh, some new ideas just because we perceive it to be working well, misses chances for us that we ought to be looking at. I mean, I'm trying to use an analogy that uh, some people maybe in the audience who uh, aren't as familiar with some of these ideas that might respond to. And uh, let's take a hotel, for example. You've got a first-class hotel, and you have a maintenance guy to work for every floor. It's 10 stories in your hotel. And you decide, well, I want to be able to fix a problem like on the spot, and it's got to be handled perfectly. And, Therefore, I'm going to have a full-time maintenance guy working on each floor in the hotel. Well, let's say after a time, you go, you know, a year goes by, whatever, and you realize that those people are working 50% of the time or something. Well, the common sense idea would be reduce the size of the group by half, and you still have enough manpower to cover all 10 floors of the hotel. Just because now you've done that doesn't mean that the, the, five, the, you know, the five people who are left are going to be at each other's throats, or there's going to be fights over who's going to get the services. I think, you know, that's up to management to make sure that that doesn't happen. But uh, to insist that, you know, no, we can't change anything. We want a separate maintenance man on each floor because then we know the job's going to get done. I mean, that's just not taking a look at the real world and the way things operate today. So um, I think it, it it's makes sense to at least acknowledge these uh, possibilities that they're going to make make some significant savings that ultimately, ultimately you're going to translate into the pocketbook of everybody in this room, or at least I assume everybody here is a township president. So um, that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Uh, Dennis O'Connor, Woodfield Drive. <laughs> uh, I'm against it um, here. Um, been here since 93, um, and I've dealt with the REC a lot more than the DPW, although I don't have a complaint against either one of them. I know a lot of guys on the DPW. I coach some of their kids, and uh, the REC has been very, very helpful to me. I think that, um, you know, the problem, you know, Peter Lynch had a saying, too. Is I've been on Wall Street since 1985, and I've been involved in four mergers. And in every 
single case you know they touted the merger that it was going to be cost savings and it was going to no jobs were going to be affected and in every single case i'm going through one right now it costs thousands and thousands of jobs i mean it's just inevitable i've seen it four times and uh the fear and maybe the perception that i have if you go ahead and do this that there's going to be a dilution on the rec side you're going to be gambling with some of the some of the kids you know um i've like i said i've been here since 93 i got three kids and they benefited greatly from the programs of the town and i think that's the fear out there that some of these uh, services if you go ahead and merge um are going to be diluted you know and i and i've never had a problem um with anybody at either place um i love living in this town it's a great town the only problem I've had with Lenny and I've, some of you on the committee, I'm trying to get a turf field here for 10 years. <laughs> and I know this isn't the time <laughs> for it, but we need it. You know, and you talked about the fields and the maintenance, and that would take maintenance off of some of them, and I think it's long overdue. But um, I just hope that it, it doesn't – I know John said earlier, you know, it, it's not only about recreation the kids, but that's a big part of it, too, because we all have kids that came up through here, and my kids have had a good experience. So I hope you'll consider that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My uh, name is Richard Dunn. I reside at uh, 59 Manger Road in Cedar Knolls, though I previously res resided at uh, 15 Longview Drive for 11 years. I've been a resident of this town for the past 23 years, since 1987. And as some of you know, I was the Democratic candidate last year and intend to be the Democratic candidate this year uh, to serve on the committee. Um, I, I echo a lot of the same comments that Mr. Francioli, uh, Mr. Cook, and Mr. Uh, O'Connor have presented. I myself am reserving judgment on whether or not this is a good idea. I think that many of the people that you see here today from Public Works, Recreation, and the townspeople who have showed up who are concerned about services do generally think that a consolidation or a unification, like you, you have uh, referred to it, uh, will ultimately, if not in the near future, lead to layoffs, lead to a diminishment of services. And I think that's why everyone is here. Uh, because in business, there have been circumstances that have arisen, like Mr. O'Connor said, uh, where that has been the result. Yes, there have been instances where there have been success but that has been the result. And I totally agree with Mr. Francioli in that I expected to come here tonight and at least hear from Mr. Schleifer and Mr. Faramaska about something more specific in terms of cost savings, because that's really the bottom line. And that's what I think Mr. Coppola and Mr. Roddy miss. You miss the point when you get on your soapbox and you applaud all the employees of this town. And I don't say that to suggest that they don't deserve it. They do. They do do a great job. But the point is we must find a way to replace $45 million. This is one exploration. You offered no solutions. You got up and you talked about how great they were. That's great. But you must offer solutions or the people you talked about that are so great are eventually going to lose their jobs. That's the reality. And you know what? We may not be facing a crisis right now, but the loss of the rateables will ultimately cause us to face a crisis in three to four years. So that's what Mr. Schleifer and Mr. Faramaska and Mayor Sheridan are talking about. The fluid situation starts now to avert a crisis three or four years down the road. 